is absolutely fantastic to see it here. It's incredible. I can't. It's completely out of context. This is my. This is the neighborhood I grew up in. It's completely weird to see people that I know from an academic environment hanging around in my neighborhood. It's a, it's a sort of Freudian bad dream. Um, the um, uh, those of you who are um, connected. Um, there is a Twitter um, hashtag, ISDM2013. It's an opportunity for you to uh, share the experiences here for the, with those who were not able to make it um, uh, to Peru. And I'll um, provide a little later some uh, suggestions about how to use the uh, website for the conference in a way that will also improve the uh, quality of your participation and the participation of those who are trying to do so from far away. Um, some uh, basic announcements here. The plenary sessions will all take place in this room. The second floor will have some exhibits. Um, as you know, this is not a conference that is sponsored by any for-profit or commercial interest, so the exhibits have to do with some um, academic uh, and, and otherwise uh, uh, sort of folks that have made or helped us uh, make this possible. Um, the fourth floor is where the, the posters are, and as well as a coffee break. There will be a couple of coffee breaks. I'll mention those in a minute. Uh, the sessions will be in the third floor, the fifth floor, and on this room. The, um, the online opportunity is uh, ISDM 2013. I think all of you must have gone through it, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And um, there is, when you interact with it now, there's a section that is uh, called announcements. It allows you to post stuff, and it will go to everyone that has uh, registered for that site. And so it's a way of having our own little private Facebook um, as we go through the conference. It also, if you register, which I hope you do, on that site, then people can see uh, that you're here and they can send you messages. So as you're getting together to go out for something, or it's a, it's a nice way of actually not having to gather up all the emails or anything, you can just message people that are here. So if you haven't registered on that particular site, uh, do so now, and then engage with that uh, as a way of improving the social interaction within the conference. Um, also, this is a place where we're going to post last-minute changes to the program. Uh, there are no last-minute changes to the program today. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, and, uh, uh, but there are a few uh, changes for tomorrow, so make sure that you look at those. Um, in that there are some, uh, some posters that are no longer, and there are some posters that are now oral presentations. And so if you want to catch those, you want to make sure you don't miss them, look at that uh, particular website. I hope that you don't get too frustrated with our efforts to uh, um, sort of manage the cost of the event, but also uh, be as green as we can uh, in terms of not giving you a big book of abstracts and things like that. And I know that it might be frustrating, frustrating for a few of you, but hopefully um, the, the trade-off is favorable. Uh, I'm not welcoming feedback. You know, it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the internet, um, uh, there are two uh, internet uh, sources going on on the site. Um, uh, this is the only one that I've been able to figure out yet. Yeah. Um, the, the, it is called Convenciones, is the SSID. And the password is, I, I'm missing a note, is public O, so P U B L I C O 06. If everyone hooks up at the same time, it falls apart. Um, that's why we have the second one. And I wish I could tell you what the name and password of that one is. I, I will uh, when I get to it. <laughs> Unlikely. Uh, do not believe anything Martin says. Um, the um, social plans. Um, lunch plans, you're on your own. Um, and one of the things that we've done is in the front, we have a map of the area with, uh, the, uh, with the suggestions for lunch. It turns out that we are in an area that's rich with opportunities to have a variety of different uh, quick or slow lunch opportunities. Peruvian food or otherwise, and so um, we, we should be able to find something that suits you. Um, I hope you don't go um, hungry. Uh, coffee breaks, uh, they'll take place mid-morning and mid-afternoon. They'll be in the fourth floor. Um, and today, during the mid-morning break, the travel advisor that helped some of you figure out uh, your travel and left some of you hanging at the airport, uh, will be here so you can beat her up um, at the mid-morning coffee break. Um, do not leave blood on the floor. Um, in terms of the evening plans, uh, Monday, so that's today, is the dinner with the experts. Last time I looked, there are three slots left. 
so if you want to have a nice dinner uh, with uh, one of the uh, people that volunteered to be the experts uh, for tonight, uh, there are three slots left. Uh, you should take advantage of those. If you want uh, any uh, dinner suggestions, we can also help you with that. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, the ISDM celebrations, exciting. Uh, it's going to be in an extremely old place. Um, the food is fresh. Um, and and, and uh, if you have your badge and it has a dock in the back, you're good. That means you're going you're gonna to be let on the bus that's going to take you to the place. If you don't have a dot, you either did not sign up for it or we forgot to put your dot. And so make sure you get your dot. Otherwise, we can't register you in for that celebration on the bus or at the facility. Uh, so make sure you get on the bus with your dog. It's going to be pretty uncomfortable for having all sorts of people celebrating inside the place and you standing outside for two hours. It's not nice. And so make sure you have your dog. The buses leave on time at 7.30 uh, from this convention center's front door. The team. Um, the, um, anyone that has that t-shirt or has this sort of red lanyard is somebody that knows something that you might uh, 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 find benefit from uh, interacting with. Um, these are, uh, the majority of them are uh, volunteer uh, physicians from Peru that have been recruited by Dr. Mala, who's been our partner here. And uh, they are uh, able to uh, direct you in all sorts of different directions that you might need. So if you see a red line here or that Peru t-shirt, uh, these are people that uh, can help you with all sorts of arrangements, uh, particularly things that I, have, I may have not announced uh, right now. Um, and as I'm talking about the team, uh, it is absolutely essential to recognize the enormous effort of everyone that's not here, because they're all outside working and making sure this is working well. So it's going to be a little uh, strange that I ask you to clap for them, because they're not here to, to, to celebrate with you. But I think another thing you can do when you see a red line here is to say thank you when you see them and do this uh, for me. Um, so from our, from our research group at Mayo, Casey and Amber have been at the front desk. They were there yesterday as well. From Conedit, I think Dr. Mara, who is here, you can, you, can you do the little way? There he is. Um, he's uh, been instrumental. <laughs> Sophia and Laura, who have been incredible, and they in turn recruited these red ribbon um, um, uh, volunteers who are absolutely the most overqualified volunteer force I've ever seen in my life. So again, make sure that you say thank you for to the red ribbons when you see them. Um, uh, Annie, is Annie here? Annie's right there. So um, there's a fantastic scientific uh, committee that not only work through the abstracts, but also work to selecting which um, uh, to the timing of the presentations, to make sure that if somebody had two presentations, they were not at the same time, and that they, they didn't. And she was, you know, Annie led this team in such a thoughtful way that she was thinking how many stairs you will have to go up to one session to the other. So people that had sort of similar interests didn't have to travel as much. A, a level of interest that, a, a level of attention to detail is just absolutely astounding. And, and uh, I don't think I could have done it. Faster than you would want, but as the memories fade, I hope that the 
by seeing the pen, you will remember the great times you had uh, here. Um, the conference. Um, the title was not a typo. We tried to reflect the notion that our community is getting more diverse. Um, so we said pacientes in Spanish, at, thinking about the technologies associated with, uh, with what we're doing, center to uh, appeal to uh, the Canadians and uh, maybe the British and then healthcare. And the, the idea of, of, of naming our conference and uh, uh, in, 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 in focusing on patient-centered care has to do with reminding ourselves why is it that we're interested in shared decision-making. It's not to save money, it's not to improve efficiencies, it's, it's really to focus on the patient. And our, our point about globalizing shared decision making was not just about talking, uh, bringing the conference to the southern hemisphere, to Peru, and, and, and thinking of it in global terms, but also moving from the attention to the way two people interact and make a decision together to the whole context in which that uh, uh, actually happens. Um, and in, um, in this trip, in having our discussions with Herman Malaga and the other folks from Peru about what would make so difficult? What would make it so difficult for us to think about shared decision making in Peru? We realize that in imagining those two people coming together to have a conversation, we have to imagine a whole host of other things that have to happen. All of which will only happen if those designing those ex um, experiences do so by showing tremendous respect for the patient. And so, as, as if you want to have a, a shorthand of what we are. Um, what, we're, what the challenge is that we globalize shared decision making, particularly to places like Peru, the fundamental challenge is a challenge of respect. <coughs> so we need to respect the person in front of us and respect the, the fact that that person has not only, a, not only a disease but also a brain that actually can participate in making decisions with us, but also a family and a time commitment and, a, and other obligations, and we have to be respectful of that. And that which seems such a basic message is constantly forgotten, not only in places uh, like Peru, but in places that are currently fighting uh, measures of austerity and, and, and efficiency and fiscal challenges where healthcare cost reduction becomes absolutely essential. And the, the people that tend to be forgotten are the people that cannot organize, the people that cannot uh, uh, raise their voice loudly, and that often is the person that is suffering, the person for whom we're trying to do all this work, and that is the patient. Um, here's a poem uh, from Cesar Vallejo. Cesar Vallejo is a Peruvian poet, perhaps uh, the greatest Peruvian poet. And um, I think it reflects uh, my, my view of what this group could be about. So I read it in English, um, although the Spanish sounds so much nicer. Um, At the end of the battle, and the combatant dead, a man came on to him and said, do not die, I love you so much. But the corpse, Alice, kept on dying. Two men approached and repeated, do not leave us, be brave, come back to life. But the corpse, Alice, kept on dying. Twenty, a hundred, a thousand, half a million came toward him shouting, so much love and nothing can be done against death. But the corpse, Alice, kept on dying. Millions of people surrounded him with one common plea, stay here, brother. But the corpse, Alice, kept on dying. Then all the men of the earth surrounded him. Moved, the sad horse looked at them, rose up slowly, embraced the first man, and started to walk. And if we think about the, Im the importance of risk, rescue, and respect, it will not take one person, two people, it will take all the community that we can gather to make sure that we can give respect to our patients and put patients in the center. I want to welcome you to her. I want to invite uh, Trudy up to the uh, stage. Trudy was the person that, um, that looking so cool, made a mass trick at previous meeting, it looked so easy to organize. Darn Trudy. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to, uh, I'm sure we'll be fine, Trudy, thank you. Thanks, Victor. So my name is Trudy van der Weyden, and I'm one of the members of the award jury. And two years ago, at uh, the sixth conference, um, we had honored uh, Annette O'Connor. And actually, she sends her warm regards to all of this, to, all, to this community. 
that that was for her achievement and contribution to this chair decision making field. He gave her, she gave an extra long keynote on Sunday evening and there was some music to honor Annette. Thanks to you, Victor. Uh, we made this now more professional and uh, there were some real awards. We selected one member of our community for the impact of the field award. Who is contributing highly to the advancement, organization and the science of shared decision making. Here are some highlights of this person. This person mentors many new researchers into the field, and one of which was myself actually. Organized one of the conferences has been part of almost all other major initiatives, including EBDA's Option, Comrade, Option Ritz, and two edited books on the state of the art. This person published over 250 papers in index journals, and uh, 69 of which as first author, most about shared decision making. This person's work is cited many, many times. It's impressive. And if you look at the invited keynotes this person gave, and this is the last five years only, you wonder how a person can accomplish such work from Europe to the United States to Canada to New Zealand and Peru. But it's not just the amazing volume of the contributions, it's the content. He is creating, facilitating, researching, and giving us the art of language. Here's another poem. It's from a poet from, uh, originating from his hometown. Me, Polly Garter, under the washing line, giving the breast in the garden to my bone new baby. Nothing grows in our garden, only washing and babies. And where's their father's life, my love? <coughs> Over the hills and far away. You're looking up at me now. I know what you're thinking, <coughs> you poor little milky creature. You're thinking you're no better than you should be, Polly. That's good enough for me. Oh, isn't life a terrible thing? Thank God. So, this award is to recognize his contributions and to say thanks for giving us the art of language and leadership and friendship. This handmade stitcher of silver and wood symbolizing, symbolizes a traveling musician, as that is what this person does so well. He brings us the art and music of shared decision making. Of course, this can only be one person. And please help me with honoring him and give him the biggest applause you have for him, for Professor Glyn Elman. a very good mixture to 